Welcome back guys. This week on uh, the channel we're going to be looking at a new project here. Did some uh, picking up and already done some cleaning and working on it. I'll show you that. And uh, it's just a basic uh, introduction to a project that's going to be around for a while. Uh, we'll be working on this one off and on coming up. This is just a basic overview. Take a look at uh, how we picked it up, where we picked it up, and a few things we've uh, learned about it. And did a little automotive archaeology. So, thanks for tuning in. Check out the 1966 Dragon Wagon Nova Chevy 2. All right, guys. So we were at the auction and we did something dumb. But here's our new project down the road. Not next project, but another project. 66 Nova Wagon. We'll go over it later, but I'm picking it up today from the auction. It's back in this corner. And we're grabbing it with the old big red one. But there it is. Back in the corner, unrunning, undriving. Drag, drag car wannabe. We'll go over that later. back in that corner I couldn't see it but they don't make quarters for these that's the problem so this has all been bounded in I saw this but underneath it looks normal I think that's the bondo kind of sounds like it versus metal yeah fiberglass fender or bumpers and I had it here I saw a little too but this sounds like metal but it can feel the bondo right there and then it stops here. So I thought it was just this. Not all the way up. But she ain't perfect, but these are harder to come by. Whether you like them or not, it's another story. I like them. My first car was supposed to be one. And uh, miscommunication and all this kind of stuff. And I missed out on it when I was 17 years old. Been kind of looking for one since. And they're either too rough for the money or they're too nice and too much money and I can't afford it because I'm not a rich man this was okay money for the condition it's in but it's got good bones good floors good everything else is rust free I knew about the quarters but I don't repop them for these wagons so I might have to buy some regular quarters and alter them we'll see I'm not making a sh nothing I do is a short car that's why it's Mad Rats Industrial Customs everything industrial but looks good on looks good on film alright we're gonna load up and get out of here alright guys just a little uh Show and tell here on the Nova we bought. Needs a lot of cleaning. I think she sat a long time. 
I talked to the uh, a little back history. Uh, the previous owner passed away in March of 2022. I talked to a good friend of his who had known the gentleman for 15 years and has had this car the whole time he's known him and said he used to drive it everywhere and decided he wanted to make a drag car out of it. Well, come to find out, I think it's been a drag car a lot longer than 15 years. There's a lot of good work done on this, but it's old style. I found receipts from 2017 for parts um, that are in boxes that are brand new. Um, the car's got really good bones. It isn't perfect. I didn't need or want a drag car. I mean, it's completely street legal, whatever. It's pro street or whatever you want to call it. I'm a little upset about these. I may end up taking this roll cage out completely. But, uh, because you can't use the back seat. Whoa. Tailgate, you know, the paint's, paint's old, but the tailgate's got this issue. No solid, no solid rust or nothing, just flaking from age. I think it was improperly prepped. Um, put a different floor in back here all the way from the, where the, well actually where the passenger seat goes and then it's mini tubbed which I don't mind that. The mini tubbing. Because these cars you're lucky if you could get a 225 underneath them. There was so much not enough room between the springs and the, uh, the fenders. Well, now as you can see, there's an 11 and a half inch wide tire in there. And there's still plenty of room to the spring. You could go pretty fat if you wanted to. And, uh, plenty of room. Good thing is they didn't shorten the rear end. So I can put a normal wheel on here and it'll fit just fine and look normal. So a lot of times they shorten the rear end and then uh, oh, then you're limited to what you can put on here for tires. Rockers are good. Bottoms of the doors are good. Doors are good. You know, lightweight panels. I'm not going to spend any money on this up at first. Good cleaning. It doesn't run. The, the guy I talked to that knew the owner said in the last five years he'd never heard the motor run. He heard the motor had been completely rebuilt. Um, doesn't know that it's ever been fired. It's not hooked up. No plug wires. Caps off the distributor. Um, I'll show you in a minute. All that. I'll get ahead of myself. But all the stuff is here. The headliner's here. All the trim. This stuff's not missing. The interior trim that would go in there. This may give me an opportunity down the road is one of the project videos maybe that uh, give my hand at doing some interior work. Oh, let me get my old ass up in here. Oh, and this is one thing that made me think this wasn't something he just did in the last five years. This is custom made carpet, custom made to fit around the. But this carpet's old. This is not five-year-old carpet. This is 15, 20-year-old carpet. Um, factory wagons had this lifted area. This has been remade for the race car. But they did have this. I'm going to have to figure out how and why and to be able to put seats in here. Because I would like to put it back to having regular full interior with a back seat. And at that time, it would have been nice if... These were straight across and down, but these will have to come out. And maybe at that time, I'll just pull the whole damn roll cage out. But again, really solid. Floors are solid. Racing buckets. That one's not bolted down. B&M shifter, but this shifter. He must have planned on replacing it. There's a brand new Hurst in the box, which I actually like better. The dash was done really well. Um, not my style. I don't want to drag dress, but it'll be in here for a couple of years because the whole roll cage thing. Again, roll cage. Roll 
little cage. Um, they went through the dash. But again, has to be an older style because for legitimate drag racing, you need a bar from here to, to there. It needs to come through here and there isn't one. So I don't know if this is a pro street setup, but they did a good job. I mean, they did a good job. All the pieces and everything. I don't know how hard it is gonna be to I'm gonna, I'm gonna order a whole new weather strip kit. But I only left it up here on the ramp truck this week just because. All right, hold on. All right, a little distraction there. So, so after the guy passed away, was left to his daughter, she contacted people. And in April of this year, it was brought over here to the auction company. And it sat outside and went through Hurricane Ian, which is why all of this. Otherwise, I think it's been in the garage its whole life. But we got a bunch of corrosion and stuff going on. So this is just the documentation of what we're starting with. So we can see where we're going came with boxes and piles of stuff piled in it and uh, I do have a grill I ordered new mounts because some of the mounts are missing off the grill it's got a remote filtering system at least they did this while it sat outside it's got a Howe double pumper on it I have to run the numbers on that I think that's a larger one I had a 780 on a vehicle before I think that's either a 780 or larger. It's got the big Mallory Unilite, which I like those, but I'm gonna have to take some digging around and see if I got the cap for it. And see if and why he has a brand new Excel and a box for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind keeping that. I like Unilites when they work, they work good. Victor Jr. intake. Everything under the covers looks new. Springs, push rods, screw in girdle, or uh, screw in rockers. It's pretty stout. I'm told, I don't know, I've never seen these adapters before, but I'm told those must be big block headers because look at the freaking size of these monsters. And everything fits within centimeters but it fits around the steering box fits in tight and a bunch of chrome cross members and motor mounts and Okay, bag to back up. I might actually just take this over to the car wash as it is and really blow this out. At least at this angle, everything in the back would get blown out the back instead of getting into the carpet and maybe get a chance to blow this out good. We'll do that tomorrow. It's Friday. We're going to do that. Again, guys, this is just going to be a slow process of getting this ready. I'm trying to finish up a few other projects. Um, I have no, I had no intentions of dying a project for myself. I had no intentions of uh, getting something like this. But I'm—I uh, don't know why there's a big boat kill switch up front here. But uh, I do need it running under its own power, so that'll be the next thing. I'm gonna get it cleaned up so I can actually, you know, touch it and not be getting dirty get it all cleaned up get the inside hosed out and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that and uh, you can have a before and after of how years of sitting or hurricane or whatever it is that caused all this crud and then we'll get this all cleaned up
gonna go from there. I don't know if there's a problem with this one. If you took out the old one and put this in, nothing's hooked up. But there's an aluminum radiator that came with it. Um, I don't think necessarily better, and it looks like it was hooked up once. It looks new, but it looks like it was hooked up once. This don't look new, but sometimes these are really good radiators. Issue here, an issue there, flipping ants everywhere. I gotta find a hood bow, or I might just get a cowl inducted hood for this. I like these with a cowl inducted hood. I just don't, can't be spending the money right now. But let me uh, walk my ass down here. Hopefully this weekend we'll be able to get this put inside and put up and I'll do another video of the underneath. I'm really curious. I think it's low enough that you can see just enough under there, but can't really see good. So well, tell me what you think guys. I don't know if you're into these or not, but this one's for me. This one's for me. Again, I like saving them. And it looks good from a few feet away, which is fine. I'm a little, I don't know, it's got a little pecker in here when you get up close. It's got it in there. Hard to get it on film. Start to chip there. It's got a little rusty area by the window there that if I get after it early enough, I might be able to save that before it goes too far. This side's worse. And I think because they put this floor in, if you look, where the floor is underneath none of this has rust so I think when they welded in the floor they uh, maybe got some warpage I don't know they skim coated it and then it's blistering from age because they didn't do a real good job with the paint um, the body's real straight but it's almost like they didn't let it sit long enough or something. So I'm, I'm thinking this whole car was skim coated. I mean, a it, it, long time ago. That's why it's pretty straight. It's not the best paint. It's flaking in a lot of areas where it's just easily coming off. So I think they might have sanded it too far and didn't leave enough to grip. But then again, in places like this, all you see is the sanding marks. So I don't know. And then they moved the gas door. It used to be here. You can see the outline of it. That's a factory spot. They moved it here because they put a different tank in it. And because they had to move the gas door because of the mini tubs. I have to do something with that and try to find a different way to do that. But other than there used to be a wheel well there, spare tire wheel well. And obviously they put the whole new floor in. So sorry for all the pausing here. I'm just soaking in what's been done, what needs to be done. I think I'll get the rest of this stuff out and then uh, get ready to really just power wash the shit out of this interior. And at this angle, I think it'll be the way to do it at the car wash. It'll all run out nice away from the carpet. Give me a chance to really get all this clean. I mean, it's filthy and I can actually use the body brush on it and, and get it good. So... 
I'll get a few more of these things out and uh, maybe do a video of power washing it. But yeah, they had to move that because of the wheel tubs. Because it would have been right there, and you can see the wheel tub covers where this would have been. <laughs> Comes right out in the wheel well tub. Because they went a lot higher. Normal wheel wells usually were just right here, so it probably came out and over. Now they had to go here. So they did a lot of stuff, and, and it shrank. The skim coating to cover that body work shrinks. It takes years to do that, but. Potentials there. If I sound a little down, guys, <laughs> or concerned, I had no business buying this. I really, really didn't. I've been looking for one for 35 years. I don't know if I said this earlier. It was supposed to be my 17 year old birthday. Not my birthday, but when I was 17, my first car. And I uh, was going to buy a 69 Camaro. That was a really good deal. We were at a big car show up in Minneapolis with, you know, 5,000 or 12,000 cars there and probably two, 3,000 for sale cars. And uh, I think it was back to the 50s. Again, 35 years ago. My memory's a little rough. But I uh, found a 69 Camaro. Real nice one. Not an SS or anything like that. Just a Camaro. Bucket seats. Four speed. Or no, I think it was an automatic. Red with black interior. Not perfect, but nice. But nice. For six grand. And back then, that was probably an $8,000 car. So it was a good deal. Went and got permission from my dad. Yep, we'll borrow the extra money. Well, I was walking back to get it. And... It passed me going the other direction with its new owner driving it. The guy had sold it while I was off getting approval. And I was down in the dumps, walking back. And uh, I walked up on one of these. And it was that seafoam silver green with a black top. It had the factory tinted windows from California. It had the factory surf rack, roof rack on it. It had the factory rallies. It was a factory super sport car with a 283. Black interior, bucket seats, center console, floor shifted automatic. I mean, factory air. I mean, it was a really nice car. And I fell in love instantly. I'm like, that's why I wasn't able to buy that Camaro. It wasn't meant to be. I was meant to buy this car. And it was 3500 bucks. And we were leaving, and my dad thought I was kidding, and later on he said, why are you so bummed out? And I said, because you wouldn't let me buy that Nova. I don't get it, that Nova wagon. I don't get it. He said, what? You're 17. What's a kid want a station wagon for? Why would you want that? And I looked at him funny because we have 55 Nomad, a 56 Nomad, and a 57 four-door wagon. Uh, you know, we're wagon people. And he's like, you really like the wagon? I'm like, I like it better than the Camaro. Well, I'll call the guy and you got his number? Yeah, I got his number. Call him and see if it's still for sale. Well, unfortunately, he was leaving back to the 50s and a guy came up to him and uh, offered him three grand on the spot. And the guy took it and it was sold and done and gone. And 35 years later, I've still been looking for one. And I either come across them in really rough shape beyond my ability beyond my want to ability i don't want to put floor pans in a patch here or there is fine i don't want to do whole floor pans i don't want to do whole quarter panels i don't want to have to deal with rockers and everything else and everything i find is just a rusty mess that they want way too much money for or they're super nice and they're way more money than i can spend and then this guy shows up in a part of my life where I'm getting rid of a car because I need the money to buy something else to flip to make some money and instead I take the money I sell that for and I buy this <laughs> because there it sat really good bones really good potential So, that's my new member of the family. I'm not bummed. I'm excited about it, but I'm bummed because I'm not really in a position. Now I need to really push to get a few other things that aren't ready to sell, sold, and uh, make up for the fact that I'm putting that in the arsenal. 
um, but it needs to run and drive under its own power so that I can pull it in and out of the shop. Jeepers creepers, these stinking gnats are really getting really getting bad right now. So I'll do a few videos of it being up and getting it going. I'm, I am excited, don't, don't get me wrong. I am excited about having this. I'm a little worried. Um, again, roll cage. If I ever want to put it back to like a stock type. I, sh I shouldn't say stock. I have a perfect opportunity to put custom interior in here and actually try my hand at interior. I've got the equipment, I've got material I've always wanted to do, and this would be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, flat door cards, you know, stuff like that, but just not sure what I'm gonna get into. You know, people do drag cars and they, they do sketchy stuff when they build them, when they build them in their house, and it's not a professional drag car. So far, the work, the work I'm seeing on this thing has been good. Um, my neighbor back here who works on all these hot rods that here, revving up and doing stuff, he took a quick glance underneath, took a glance at the roll cage, and he said, you know what? It's uh, It was done well. It's not some hodgepodge garage build by somebody who didn't know what they were doing, so that's a plus. But how much of the original do I have to cut out to get this stuff out and then go back forward to get it back to stock. That's all. But that being said, I don't have a family. No kids to haul around. So it would be nice to throw, you know, mom and dad in there, go for a rip, go get some ice cream, have yourself a go in a town car. Um, but nobody can sit in the back seat. And that's fine. It can be that way for a little while. But running and driving first and if it runs and drives decent i might actually drive it like this for a while and hack away at the body and and the body work and and see what i'm dealing with be a driver while uh while we're doing it so first things first up in the lift see what we got underneath and then um we're gonna be doing a little bit of will she run because nobody's heard that motor run his buddy with 15 years said i know he had a motor rebuilt never heard it run don't know nothing about it um, never seen him drive it so we will get it up and running and see if it will it run and if it runs how good does it run can we rely on it can we take a cruise and do a car show can we rip it around town a little bit i just love the way that thing looks man it's just so cool don't know what it is always like them but there you go guys there's the first installment of uh your introduction to the Nova Wagon. We gotta come up with a good name for it. Maybe the Dragon Wagon. It's probably been done. Every every drag race name's been done under the planet for stuff, so maybe the Dragon Wagon. Don't know. That's what first popped into my mind. Old drag car station wagon. Dragon Wagon. Hmm. Kinda rolls off the tongue. Alright, first installment down. See you next time. All right, guys, at the car wash, I'm done. Couldn't find a way to set this phone up or it wasn't gonna get wet. Tried doing a little filming out the back and when I got the window wet, you couldn't see nothing out of it. So I'll show you the end product here at the car wash. Let me turn you around. I spent five minutes blowing these off my deck and I still have mine here. It was so covered and caked in every orifice of this thing, so. This is just real quick that it's in here in the car wash and I didn't do a Puddin's Fab Shop beauty shot. Spent like 20 bucks in time doing it, climbing up there and getting down. I didn't even get a chance to really wash this. I just rinsed it off quick and I got a bunch of suds on it so I got a quick wash with this. But I'm going to roll the windows down and uh, get it airing out while I drive home, so. All right. All because my dang power washer at the shop took a shit. All right, a little better view. Back, wet. Get a look inside here. You can tell I'm gonna have to go in there and scrub it by hand. Those brushes are pretty gentle, but uh, maybe a little hand wax, but way better. Way, way better. Hopefully that 
I have to get a towel and clean that headliner off. Got a little too wet, but uh, yeah, I think a huge improvement. I got something to work with. As I got up in the doors, I held these open with a strap and I scrubbed them with a freaking the foaming brush. Carpet got a little wet, but most of it ran off the back, so. Headliner's really wet. I'm gonna have to get something right now to do that. So let her air out. She's going to shop today and I'm going to shop today and maybe get some uh, look underneath it. Be my first time really looking underneath it. Get it on the lift and on your compartment. Cleaned up. God, there was a lot of leaves and junk in there. So we'll let that air out and uh Make sure she's getting dry before we put her in the shop. Maybe tomorrow she'll go in the shop. I got a few things to move in there today. Still got a bumper to put on that S10 before I roll it out. Because it'll be the last time it's on the lift. Should be. I don't have anything else on the lift left to do to it. So we'll button it up and uh, get that out of here today. And then maybe this will be dry enough overnight that tomorrow or later today we'll be able to put it in. It's cooler today. So it'll probably take a little while to dry off. I mean, I can't believe how wet it still is half a mile drive and it's still wet on the outside so not drying super fast all right next time you see it it'll be on the lift and we'll be looking it over underneath all right guys Got her in the shop. Added one more pound of shit to my two pound box. Now I got 11 pounds of shit in here. <laughs> but uh, got her on the rack finally. I think she's stable. I'm going to go ahead and put her up. I'll take a look around underneath her. Get a good look at what's been done to this old girl over the years. See if my uh, my investment was, was worth it. <laughs> Maybe I'd be a little less stressed out. Um... Yeah, so let me flip you around here and we'll we'll go up with her. I tell you what, the more I look at her though, the more I like it. I just hope underneath is uh good. Why is that going up fucking crooked all of a sudden? I can add a I mean, that other side's uh, the driver's side. This arm is over a little more. It had to go under here to get to the frame instead of out wide. Is that why my that side's? Sure. Just look like yeah, that side definitely went up. Oh, that's why. That's why I have this turned all the way out. Instead of that one's turned all the way in over there. I'm gonna take it all the way down. Tell you what, it's a tour being fat and old. I don't know if I can turn on the light here. All I'm doing is unscrewing this all the way up. Here we go. <laughs> Some reason I had that, I thought I had that other one screwed all the way down, but I have the back one screwed all the way down because it's going on the spring purchase. Okay, let's try this again. I 
That's better. A little more firm. Yeah, much gooder. All right, let's get her up and take a look. Perches, yeah. On the frame, nothing's flattening, nothing's in the way. Spring perch, spring perch. Yeah. Good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Saw one, saw one of these car fall off because the guy was just too comfortable with all the years of putting cars up. I just, you know. I saw some terrible things when I was younger and getting started in the automotive industry. And I've never been a mechanic. I just, well, I shouldn't say never. I did. I worked as a mechanic for my buddy's shop. But I was never ASA certified or anything like that. I uh, worked under his shop because he knew I was good with cars. And I did part swapping and putting cars up on the lift. But I watched a guy put a car up on the lift and... That ain't good. I'm already seeing something I don't like. Put a car up on the lift and the damn driver's side wheel, that front corner, fell right off in between the lift, smashed into the ground, and nobody got hurt. But I'm like, dang, he's been doing this for years. I'm just learning. So ever since then, and I don't put cars up on a lift much. Um, do more now that I got to, and I'm doing this more often and whatever, but I always double, triple check. I'm paranoid. Don't need to make any mistakes. Especially with my own stuff. You know what? I tell you, I'm liking what I'm seeing for the most part. I'm gonna need two hands to check all these joints, make sure everything's tight and good, but they look newer. They don't look old and dilapidated. I don't see any rust or patching in here. Nothing that was hidden. All oh, this looks good. I don't see any like damages from an accident. I mean, if it was, it was replaced and done right. I like that oil pan. Clear that steering linkage. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something with that. Oh, great! Now we got compressor. fan of this the way they ran that brake line it's fine because it works for now but is that what that is the brake line yeah that's brake line there's got to be a better way to run that actually that's probably the way it was run originally from the factory it's probably mounted right here on that and across looks like that's how it was bent Maybe on this side, yep, there's the holes, the hole that right there. So we'll get some clips, get that held in better. Ah, he put heat tape on to keep that. Because if you see up in there, that's a, an adapter for an oil return. And there's two filters up there in the engine compartment for the oil filters. But that ain't gonna fly. I don't care if you heat taped it or not. We're gonna have to find a better way to route that to get some 90s, route it kind of towards the back and around. Same with this, have to figure out why that's so stinking tight. That's the tranny cooling line. You know, the boxes ain't rusted. Got junk in them. Floor pans are good. This is where they always rust out in here what my research is telling me that looks good a little dented up on the frame from being lifted over the years improperly probably with a metal point instead of a rubber pad and then <laughs> I gotta figure out a way to hold 
this and film at the same time. Can't do that because then I can't talk. So this here is a frame tie because these are unibody vehicles and that is not factory. That's put in aftermarket and they went up into the floor and probably through the floor and that's where the tubbing starts is back here and this looks like looks like they did a patch here but that might be because they where they did the roll cage I was wondering about that not a bad cross member looks to be yeah, like it drops out Huge headers. It must be big block headers. I'll go to this side and look at what we already looked at on that side. I don't see any rust. A little surface rust there. Not a hole. This looks good. Yeah. That looks good. The floors look really good. The factory floors. Looks like there might have been a little bit of a patch done there at one time. I think this is where the... I'll have to do a little more looking around, but... There's a subframe connector there. Halfway decent welds. Where the drive shaft goes. Looks good. And these are aftermarket for the adjustable springs, and they move the springs in. Could even move them further in. Looks like. Because from the factory, I think they went on the outside. Because this spring would be about here. Where were they? Up in here somewhere. So this has all been changed from here back is aftermarket floor where the, the big tubs. I mean, suckers got nine or 11 inch rallies on them. I'm gonna take a measurement on those. These are 11 and a half inch wide tires. And they tied that subframe into there. And made new, that whole back half is all new subframing. I don't know why you wouldn't have done You know, I think this is for four link. Just don't have the four link mounts on the rear end. I mean, it all looks, they all really did it. I mean, it's old guys, it's old work, but okay, so here's that quarter panel. And there's a, a, a hole I thought, I thought, I knew there'd be rust in that lower quarter. And there's some bondo from holes rotting through. But this part up here is solid, but that's where it's bubbling. And sure enough, look at spot welds, spot welded, spot welded to the outer quarter. And I bet you it warped it and they skim coated it to smooth it out. So what I'm dealing with on the outside, probably the same over here. Sure enough, this is all Bondo. I knew it would be, but up there, oh, a little bit there. But the rest of it, spot well, spot so and that's where that, all that stuff's bubbling. Yeah, it's the skim coating. Well, that ain't so bad because I knew, I knew this was going to be bondoed. They don't make root pops of those. And guys just, you know, they might have welded metal on the outside and bondoed it. I don't know. We'll have to take a closer look. It doesn't really matter. It is what it is. So, yeah, tank. Tank ain't hooked up. It's all 
still done pretty well though. Really. I mean, it was professionally done. This wasn't done in a, I mean, professionally doesn't always mean right. There's guys out there who have shops that do horseshit work. But, to be honest with you, I've seen better welding. I have to do a little research though. Because I think this is for four linking. Triangulated four link, maybe. And if that's the case, I have no problem spending the money for the brackets for the rear end. Because all the hard work's been done. The brackets may be four or five hundred bucks. Get that lined up and have coil over rear end instead of leaf spring. And this thing will ride like a dream and hook like a dream. And and again, guys, this is all down the road. Because I am not spending much money on this right now. I, we are checking this out to make sure she runs and drives and is going to be safe. Brake lines. What is that spring holding up? Oh, you got a spring holding up the emergency cable or the parking brake cable. Is that what that is? Okay. Holding it onto that. I probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah, two mounts for the shocks for different setups. Yeah. There's, a, there's some halfway decent work done here. I've seen worse. And, if, and to be honest, guys, I'm looking at this, and this is old school. I bet you this was done in the... I'm gonna date myself, but I bet you this was done in the 90s, especially just judging by this big ass H pipe. Homemade. Be nice to angle this in. Get that exhaust to run up through here, and then put the muffler up in there somewhere. Brad's drive shafts. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to pop, make sure we got fluid in the rear end. Check the fluid on the tranny. Check the adjustment on the tranny, because I don't think it's adjusted properly. Little tiny converter. That's probably a 3700 stall. Little bag of converter. When the bolts are on the outside of the converter, that's like a 36, 4000 RPM stall. There's our adapter. So yeah, if I can run a 90 out of this, or a 45 and then come this way and back around, would be much better on both of them. So, I'm gonna have to make a list, making a mental list right now, I'll write it down. Yeah, there you go guys. There's our walk around. I'm gonna set you down because I need both hands to adjust and feel these all these tie rod ends and end links and steering linkages linkages and ball joints and just make sure everything is copacetic and maybe get some grease in all of them they look like they were put in new <laughs> well of course they were put in new that's a dumb statement but they look like they were put in and they're and they're just getting old sitting here they don't look like they've moved or done anything so all right there you go. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. That's all we got time for this week on the channel. Um, next week, we'll be looking at uh, will it run. Take a look and see what's been done to this motor, what we need to do to fix it up, get it running, and see if we actually have a vehicle that's going to move under its own power and was worth the investment. So, again, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and like the channel. You really help us out a lot. Uh, help me bring you more content like this and um, 